And welcome back to Stasis. Now we have an elevator shaft in the middle and three doors that we can go through. We're going to eventually go through all three of these areas, but for now let's try the elevator shaft. No power to the elevator. That's alright, we'll come back to it later. For now though, let's try the entertainment block, although judging by the claw marks on the doors, I'm not sure I actually want to go in there. Scratch marks. Something was trying to get in. Your powers of deduction are incredible, John. Moving on to this final door, which is supposed to lead to a tram station, but there's a slight problem with it. <sighs> Looks like gas. In fact, it's because of that gas that this door has been locked. Unfortunately, they didn't idiot-proof it because you can just click on this thing right here to unlock the door and release the gas. Go ahead and guess what happens. John, wait. There's a highly corrosive gas on the other side of that door. Shit, I've already cycled the lock. John! Atmosphere compromised. <laughs> Death is in. <laughs> Breathe. And that is how you can get the ghast achievement. You know what, let's not go through any of those other doors, let's just head toward the sleeping quarters. That's where we're going to accomplish most of the things in this video, actually. Including jump scares. One of the more pressing matters with uh, this particular area isn't actually animals, it's plants. As you can see up near the top of the screen there's sort of a writhing mess of plant life and some of it is taking human form. Just, uh, just ignore that for now. However, there is a giant hole in the floor which will come into play later and a couple of PDAs. I hope you're ready for soap opera style bullshit because here we go. Isabella works in hydroponics and uh, she's working there because she wants to get her defective uterus replaced by Cane Corp. She's working with a person named Harry who has a huge crush on her and keeps following around and talking about protecting her honor and some shit like that and it's really pissing her off. But she manipulates Harry so that he'll get her stuff that she wants. like certain leaves that'll help her make tea. Then ship goes on lockdown and a strange fungus starts spreading around the Groom Lake. That finds its way to hydroponics. Harry proposes that they create like super mushrooms in order to fight the fungus and shockingly that plan doesn't work. Eventually even with all the crap that's going down on the Groom Lake Isabella resolves that she's not just going to stay in the sleeping block and she's going to venture out and try to find a way out. And she dies. Well, that's her take on what's going on. Let's see what her neighbor says. Another researcher by the name of Shelby. This one can actually be summed up pretty quickly because Shelby doesn't give a fuck. She's just going through the motions aboard the ship and eventually has sex with Harry just for the hell of it. Then she breaks the fourth wall bringing up that she doesn't know why she's writing anything in this PDA because no one's ever going to read this shit. Then she discovers that they're making moonshine aboard the ship, and she does something that she totally doesn't regret in order to get some of it. She has a brief diatribe about how technically the Groom Lake doesn't exist and the people aboard it don't exist, and that in fact nothing exists, and that humanity's gonna flip its shit when it realizes that. Then eventually the ship goes on lockdown, people start dying, she seems rather... okay with it, and then eventually just says she has no regrets in her life, and she's proud of how far the atoms that make up Shelby Isaacson have traveled, and she doesn't even regret doing that thing she did to get the moonshine. Now let's finally examine the elephant in the room. Or rather, the elephant-sized hole in the room. That is a long way down. Yes, and unfortunately there's nothing else in this room that can help us at the moment. So let's back out into the hallway and we'll head toward the next room in the sleeping quarters. 
And as you might have guessed, we're going to have even more PDAs to read from the people who were mentioned in those other PDAs. But first... Mother had a lung that was covered Hello? in fat. Father had a tongue that was also black. Is anyone there? They didn't care for us. We didn't care for them. And so it happened again and again. Skin like a crocodile and eyes like sin. The RG consumed them from within. Well, I can understand why that plays in the sleeping quarters. I mean, isn't that just so relaxing to hear as you're trying to drift off to sleep? Poor bastard. Looks like he didn't even manage to get out of his bunk. Say hello to Space Janitor Grant, everyone. He recycles methane from human shit. It was mentioned in one of the entries before, but Grant is gay, and he has a slight crush on Harry. I wasn't kidding about the soap opera bullshit. Aside from observing the weird relationship, or lack thereof, between Isabella and Harry, he mentioned that there's a pool to win 64 days of leave, but Kitchen, Security, and some other people on the ship, namely him, aren't allowed to go into it. He also has a cat named Jupiter, and Harry is allergic to it. Eventually, the fungus takes over, and there's a weird smell coming from the vents, and there are also tremors that happen, and in the process, he loses Jupiter and has no idea where she went. He mentions how a group of workers went to Station B, which is that door we couldn't get through because of the corrosive gas, and they never came back. And then he says that he hopes this isn't the end, and that he doesn't want to tell Harry how he feels because he thinks it'll just upset him, blah blah blah, he's dead. Just one more of these guys. One more, and then we can get down to some serious business. But for now, it's time to see what Harry thinks about all this. I'll never get used to this. And lastly, welcome to the Stalker Diary. Most of the entries on this PDA are just Harry being really creepy about how much he likes Belle. Which is what he calls Isabella, and in fact he got slapped for calling her that once. He also hates Grant for, among other reasons, bringing a cat on board even though he's allergic, and following around Isabella. Grant actually had an opportunity to leave the Groom Lake, but he opted to stay on so that he could be near Isabella, much to her dismay. We also learn that his idea to fight the fungus with the super mushrooms was initially suggested as a joke, and then they went through with it anyway. Then he mentions something's running around killing people, says that he would sacrifice his life just to add a couple of seconds onto Bells, and he dies. Now then, down to business. Uh, there aren't any items just laying around in this area, however, there are a couple of bed lockers here. There's this one, which unfortunately is empty. However, there's another bed locker in this room which we can access, and that does have something in it that we can put to use. Namely, we're going to find a linen bed sheet. Some of you can probably tell where this is going, but now we have to go back to the previous room, and I'm going to take my sweet time doing it because how can you not want to take in the wonderful scenery of the sleeping quarters. Whatever. We're in position now. So we'll just position ourselves by the hole and grab the bed sheet out of the inventory. And when we do... <sighs> okay. Now let's see what I can do. Actually, this will be a good example of what you can't do. <sighs> Easy goes. Oh shit! Oh shit! How the hell am I gonna get back up? God, John, you're gonna get yourself killed! Hey, this is all new to me. Climbing is new to you, John? Well, whatever. Next time on Stasis, 
someone's going to explore the sewers, and someone's going to die. <laughs>